have tracking. Let's go left. Ah, okay. After a short walk, you arrive at a massive ice hall full of crystal stalagmites and stalactites. The floor is covered with animal tracks and bones, yet the vast hall seems empty and still. You notice that the northern wall is a completely smooth surface of granite blocks stretching upwards to the icy ceiling, over 100 feet above. You suddenly realize that you're staring at the foundation of stones of Ikea. You have reached the ice fortress. Partially obscured by a large mound of crystals, you can just make out a ramp leading up to a massive stone door in the fortress wall. Your discovery brings renewed hope. If you can gain entry to Ikea and quickly capture Vonatar, there's still time to reach your ship, the Cordonal, before the ice pack starts to freeze. Uh, let's look at the floor. You discover that many of the bones scattered among the stalagmites are of human origin. Shattered skulls, skeletal hands, and rib cages lie half buried in the ice. You're about to abandon your search when a small box of bone catches your eye. Open the box. The bone box contains a beautiful diamond. Its many facets gleam and sparkle. Even the dim half-light of the ice hall in Summerland, a jewel of this size could be worth thousands of crowns. If you wish to keep it, mark it as a special item. I don't think the diamond is anything. But we'll take it anyway, because why not? Okay. As you climb the slippery stone ramp, the sounds of cracking ice make you spin around. The large amount of crystals at the base of the ramp is beginning to move. It's alive. You stare in disbelief as the mound is transformed into a writhing mass of crystal coils. The coils unwind and the ice creature slithers towards you. Uh, let's fight it. Hmm, that's pretty. This strange creature is a crystal frostworm, a scavenging beast now living on the remains of the unfortunate creatures who entered the cavern. Its hard skin is almost transparent, and its internal organs can be seen pulsating inside. Ew. A large mouth opens in the crystalline head to reveal row upon row of jagged crystal teeth. Your back is pressed to the stone door, and there's no way to evade the monster. You must fight the creature to the death, and it is immune to mind blast. Oh, darn, my bonus is only plus ten, then. Hmm. Okay, he's got thirty hit points. We've got a plus ten, so we might be able to one-shot him. We didn't. We took damage for some reason. We took more damage, and then we killed it. Ew, we took lots of damage, though. You watch with a mixture of fascination and revulsion as each segment of the creature shatters and slowly dissolves into ice. Soon all that remains of the crystal frostworm are the undigested contents of its stomach. To your surprise, in the center of the mess is fetid flesh and bone, you see a shank of silver key. Let's take the key. The key is coated with corrosive digestive acid that burns through your mittens and attacks your fingers. God damn it! Lose an endurance point. I'll just not get the one I healed. You drop the key and plunge your hand into the snow to ease the pain. If you still wish to keep the key, you can wipe it in the snow before placing it in your pocket. Okay, silver key. Damn it, game. The fortress door is completely smooth. It has no visible lock, hinge, or keyhole. However, turning your attention to the granite wall, you notice one of the massive blocks is different than the others. A small triangle has been cut into its surface. I do not possess a blue stone triangle. Son of a bitch. <laughs> you search every square inch of the door and the surrounding wall, but there appear to be no unusual features. You're examining the stone ramp when a loud roar freezes your blood. A Kalkoth has entered the ice hall. You turn to see the creature bounding towards you, its jaws wide open, revealing its barbed tongue. You cannot evade the Kalkoth and must fight it to the death. If you lose any endurance, turn to 66. Oh, God. So he's a 10. He has 28 hit points, and we need to one-shot him. And we took two damage. And he's dead. But we took damage, so the barb of a Kalkoth's tongue holds a powerful venom, with which it paralyzes the victim before devouring them. The venom takes only a few seconds to act, and stunned by the barb, you quickly fell in, into unconsciousness, and you die. Yep. You die. Just, you, you took damage, you die. This one's kind of bullshit. We'll go ahead and half our hit points, round it down. <clears throat> 
and continue on. Since we did beat him, and we only took two points of damage, so... I uh, don't feel like starting over. Mm. Just for humor's sake. There. We one-shotted him. Okay. You notice that the Kalkoth has a blue triangle of stone on a chain around its neck. Oh, boy. Suddenly, you realize the significance of this strange amulet. Uh, let's see. Grabbing the blue stone, you race back to the fortress door and press it into the wall recess. It is a perfect fit. More crap. I think we only need it for this adventure, though. You become aware of a faint tremor running through the ledge on which you're standing, followed by the grinding noise of stone upon stone. The door opens, but is only open three feet when there's a loud crack and it starts to close. Without a second's hesitation, you dive into the fortress and hear the massive door crash shut behind you. The corridor in which you now stand is far warmer than the icy cavern outside, and for the first time in many days you can lower the hood of your cloak and remove your mittens without risking any frostbite. You notice that the stone passage ascends to a landing where another passage branches off to the east. The Mlari bowls hang at regular intervals along the arch ceiling, their unnatural light illuminating the carved walls. As you approach the landing, you notice an archway leading into a small room beyond. A strange sight meets your eyes as ragged furs, pottery shards, and the debris of hundreds of years seem to have been thrown into this chamber. A large lever protrudes to the wall beside the archway. Huh. Look at the crap in the room. Pull the lever. Let's look at the crap in the room. After ten minutes of searching the room, you discover an old fur backpack and a long coil of rope. And you only take the backpack if you don't already have one. The rope counts as two backpack items. Hmm. Sounds like a sensible thing to have with me, though. <laughs> Satisfied that there's nothing of value in the junk-filled room, you leave and continue your exploration along the East Passage. Okay. You soon reach the bottom of a flight of broad steps that ascend north to northwards to a landing 30 feet above. The center of each step has been worn smooth by the feet of the countless creatures that once inhabited the lower levels of cold Achaea. As you climb, you wonder how long you will remain undetected. So far, you've neither seen nor heard any other living soul in these deserted passages. You have the element of surprise on your side. You now pray that Vonatar is unprepared for an intruder from the depths of his own fortress. You reach a landing and pass through an empty hall towards a darkened archway beyond. Here the passage splits and branches off towards east and west. You are hungry and must now eat a meal. I have a meal. Suck it, book. You and your one-hit kill nonsense. Oh yeah, we died. Uh, died by... Caw. Poison. Okay, east, west, east, west, east, west. Let's go west. You've been walking along the passage for less than five minutes when it veers sharply northwards. Just ahead to your left, you see a large stone door. The lever's up and the door is closed. Let's open the door. The stone portal creaks open but grinds to an abrupt halt halfway across. The gap is a little over two feet wide and you are only just able to squeeze through to the chamber beyond. The air in the room is cold and stale. This chamber's obviously lain undisturbed for thousands of years. Stone shelves are stacked high with bottles and flasks, and on a table in the center lies a beautiful pack full of different colored potions. Let's look at the potions. The pack contains four ornate glass vials. They hold red, orange, green, and black liquids. Hmm, you may leave the chamber at any time. What's the red potion? Wiping the grimes from the stopper, you unscrew it and sniff the liquid. Uh, I have a healing discipline. It is distilled Lomspur, a herb of great healing properties. Speaking of healing, oh god. Let's go ahead and drink that. 18. We'll just say 18, because I'm sure it's been a couple pages since I've healed. Okay, uh, let's look at the orange one. To take great care not to bring the slender glass neck. Uh, I do have six sense or weapon skill. 
Distill the lether, a potion of strength. Oh. There's enough concentrated lether to increase your combat skill by four for the duration of one combat. Sweet. That's kind of handy. I like this room. Let's see. You managed to remove the hardened wax that covers the stopper and ease the reluctant seal. If you have animal kinship, or if you've reached aspirant, which we have. Okay. Recognize the aroma of concentrated gallop brush or sleep tooth. This is the thorny briar your Kai masters once used to induce sleep when tending ill or injured horses. Hmm. Powerful sleeping potion. Okay. This room's awesome. And what's the black potion? Oh god. The stopper is sealed with wax. If you wish to break the seal, you must risk smashing the thin glass of the vial. Break the seal! Uh, oh god. I do have Mind Blast. <coughs> Neat. Manage to crack the seal in exactly the right place, and thereby avoid smashing the thin glass stem. The vapor rising from the lack liquid is sharp and pungent. Have you ever visited the graveyard of the ancients? I have, actually. In the first book. This isn't the reason we went there, but it is pretty cool. Uh, you recognize the pungent smell of distilled grave weed. This black concentration is a very powerful poison. You quickly replace the stopper. If you wish to keep it, yep. Sure I do. Maybe I can accidentally drink it later. Okay, let's leave. You notice that the ceilings and walls of the corridor are covered with strange carvings. They seem to depict small cyclones or tornadoes, gradually changing shape into almost human form. Although puzzled by the strange hieroglyphs, you continue until you reach a point where the north tunnel takes a sharp right turn. Only a few feet along the northern wall is another stone door. The lever at the wall next to it is raised, and the door is formally closed. Let's look at the door. You depress the lever, and the stone door slides aside to reveal a large chamber. It is cold, stale, and empty, except for a granite chest. Let's look at the chest. The faces of grotesque and distorted creatures adorn the surfaces of the chest. Their obscene expressions and unnatural proportions make you shudder with revulsion. Set into the center of the lid is a large stone block carved with a hideous face, the mouth of which is shaped around a silver key, uh, a keyhole. I do possess a silver key. You insert the key and turn it clockwise. A click confirms it works, and slowly the shank of the key slips from your grip and disappears into the lock. Oh, no more silver key. Boop. Let's see. And the great stone lid opens to reveal a magnificent silver helmet. Sixth Sense says the helmet has magical properties that aid you in combat. You detect no evil surrounding this item or the stone chest which it lies. Hmm. Okay, so we'll replace our regular helmet and put it on. Despite its size, the helmet feels light and comfortable. Mark it on your action chart as a special item. If worn during combat, it will increase your combat skill by two points. Oh, so we go along the staircase. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. So instead of plus two endurance, we get plus two combat skill. So we're back up to, oh god, 14 bonus. That's ridiculous. Is that right? No, my, oh, I messed that up. That should be 15. That I should be at least at like 23 or so. You climb over 100 stone steps before arriving at a narrow landing. If you have six cents tracking hunting, add three to your random number. Nine! I'm doing good random numbers, at least. To your right, you notice that a stone door is cunningly concealed by an intricate wall carving. Pull the lever! A stone door moves slowly to one side. It reveals a narrow archway full of billowing, swirling mist, hiding whatever lurks behind. Hmm, I am a guardian, and I do have six cents. 